You know, uh, if you saw kind of our service order today, it was a little bit different. Uh, and, and I just really want to encourage uh, Pastor Margot as actually this week she has officially joined our staff. Right? Can, we, can we get an amen? Yes. Uh, this week, we, we saw a growing of an alliance uh, where we really dreamed and prayed together with people in Korea that have already, in Seoul, that already been praying and sacrificing, serving the next generation. And so that's such a huge blessing. But I think today's message is going to be very, very important. Because today's message tackles, I think, something that all people in Korea, especially in Seoul, but most of the young people say is the biggest issue that is in their heart, and that is restlessness, right? It is a lack of peace. 제가 계속 신방을 하면서 또 우리 핵심 멤버들이랑 얘기를 나누면서 제일 큰그 어려운 점은 이 마음의 평화가 없다. 그런 말씀을 저한테 많이 전할 때가 많습니다. But that's the thing, right? As a Christian, we're called to have peace. And so today we want to ask the question, why? Why do we not have peace? And more importantly today, why does Jesus take us through the storms? 예수님께서 왜 우리의 삶 통해서 우리의 풍랑을 통해 우리의 가르치는 뭐를 가르치는지 오늘 오늘 우리가 uh, Mark 4:35 through 41 통해서 그 얘기를 같이 나누겠습니다. Right? And so can you open your Bibles to Mark uh, 4:35 through 41 as I read for us the word of God and that will be a huge blessing. On that day when evening has come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And the other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And when and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and sea obey him? This is a reading of God's word. This is a passage that we have all read many, many times. And this is a passage that we really must understand in the heart. To live powerfully as a Christian. 우리가 예수님 믿는 자로서 우리 삶의 은혜가 풍부하기 위해서는 이 본문을 진정의 우리의 가르침만 아니라 우리의 삶 통해서 보여줘야 됩니다. Right? And so we have to look at this passage to see what this passage is about. And so if you see the first phrase in this passage, it says what? On that day. So on that day represented that Jesus spoke all these parables. He spoke the parable of the sower. He spoke the parable of the light under the basket. He even spoke about the parable about the mustard seed. And he even told his disciples that my family are not just my biological father and mother, but it is those who are in the kingdom of heaven. 
And so on that day, it says what? When the evening came, he said to them, let us go to the other side. And what the other side was to the other side of the Sea of Galilee so that the next day they could do ministry. And so the question then is why did Jesus take them to the other side at night? Why didn't he just say, okay, let's rest and let's go to the other side in the morning? And that's what I want to answer today. Why did Jesus take his disciples on this boat trip through the storm? And for me, when I look at this passage, it really is a metaphor of discipleship and that Jesus had perfect timing of why he took them through the storm after his teaching. And there's three things I want to teach us through this storm and what it teaches us about discipleship. The first thing I want to teach us is that the storm for Jesus was a test to the disciples. 이 풍랑은 예수님께서 제자들에게 주신 시험입니다. And what that test was to see if they applied what he taught them the morning and the afternoon of that day. But before we even think about this, let's think about how we take the test that God gives us in our life. 우리는 예수님께서 우리에게 풍랑을 주시면 우리가 어떻게 답장합니까? 우리 많을 땐 우리가 피해 의식으로 하나님, 어찌 저한테 이런 시험을 주십니까? 어찌 제가 주님을 따르는데 제가 모든 것을 주님 위해서 현실했는데 왜 저한테 이런 시험을 주십니까? And so we ask that question. We say Jesus, how can you give me this test when I'm following you? How can you give me this hardship when I'm following you? But if you think about it, Jesus gives us the test or he gives us the storm to see if we are actually following him. And actually, it's kind of funny when we say, Jesus, how can you give me the test? Because only through a test, we are able to know if we are qualified. Amen? 이 시험 통해서 우리가 알수 있잖아요. 내가 이것을 안다. 이것이 나다. 난할수 있다. And so Jesus gives us the test to see if we truly follow him. And the, and the main thing in, in that part, to gauge what we have learned, not what we have studied. 시험은 우리가 공부하는 그거 위에서 시험 주는 것이 아니라 우리가 진정히 무엇을 아는지를 시험하고 계십니다. And so Jesus was testing the disciples if they really had the faith of the mustard seed. That through the craziness of the storm, if they could trust in Jesus. Jesus was testing if their soil was good soil or if the thorny Needles of life or the storms of life would snatch the seeds out of being planted in their heart. Jesus was testing his disciples to see if they said, 네, 알겠습니다. Or if they really believed it in their hearts. I remember there's, there's something that uh, when I was in ed- uh, youth ministry, 제가 중등부 사역을 10, 10년 넘게 했거든요. And um, 많은 목회자들은 2년 하고 이, 고, 이 중등부 고등부 사역하기가 어려워요. 네, 너무 그때가 너무 혼란이 많은 시기라서. 근데 제가 어, 몇년 중등부 사역을 하면서 제자 훈련은 되게 크게 했어요. I did a lot of discipleship. So I remember we had 200 kids, but over 50 kids, actually no, uh, 30, 40 kids signed up for leadership class, 사역반, and another 30, 40 kids signed up for discipleship. So almost 80명이, 200명 중에 이 제자 훈련을 하기를 결심했어요. And in junior high, they were on fire. 금요 찬양 uh, 그때도 오고 uh, 매일 그 학교에서도 기도를 열심히 하고 그런 모든 모든 과정에서 부모님들은 와우, wow, 붕이 일어났다. Right? There is great revival on the land. 근데 제일 어려운 것은 고등학교 때가 어려웠어요. And the crazy thing was majority of these students, more than 70%, more than 70%, when they went to high school, they completely, seemingly lost their faith. And that's when I said, ah, 내가 진정히 제자 훈련을 제대로 하고 있나? 
Am I teaching them jishik? Am I teaching them how to follow the environment? 왜냐하면 이 중등부 사회에는 되게 강한 이 문화가 있었거든요. 하나님 나라 위한 문화. Or am I teaching them to become more like Christ? 그래서 제가 4년 차 돼서 제가 한 결심했어요. 이번에는 열 가지 가르치는 것이 아니라 한 가지 제대로 가르친다. I'm not going to try to teach many things. I'm going to teach them one thing that they can make their life. 그래서 우리 사역 팀한테 제가 말했어요. The last shall be first. The first shall be last. 그들은 되게 열심히 인터뷰도 uh, 하고 시험도 보고 삶으로 보여줬거든요. 나는 이제 이 미니스트리에서 사역을 할수 있다. And I always told them, "You are a servant. You're not a leader. You are a servant. Do you believe that?" And 그들이 다 이렇게 말했어요. "I am a servant. I am a servant." 근데 제가 또한 팀을 더 만들었거든요. We had the servant team, which was the leadership team, right? And then we had the invisible servant team, which was the real servant team. <laughs> 있잖아요. 그, 그 사역자들은 그래도 섬긴다 그런 말 하지만 그 포지션도 있고 리더의 롤도 있고. 근데 진정한 섬기는 자들은 이줄 예배 위해서 섬기고 끝나고 섬기고 이 많은 과정이 있었어요. 리더십 팀 열두 명 있었고. 섬기는 자들은 30명 있었어요. And I always said, every meeting, 제가 말했어요. First shall be last, last shall be first. Last shall be first, first shall be last. 그리고 제가 다짐했거든요. 3개월 안에 그들을 역할을 바뀐다, 바꾼다. To see what they would take from it. 3개월, uh, after three months, I told them, we are going to switch roles. The invisible servants, You will now be the servants that will shepherd, be little shepherds in your groups. And the servants that were shepherding the groups, you will now serve in the background for the rest of the year. 그 시험 통해서 알았거든요. 어떤 애들은 부모님과 같이 와서 어찌 목사 이렇게 할수 있습니까? 얼마나 열심히 섬겼는데 왜제 자녀가 이, 이 자리를 내놓아야 됩니까? 제가 그래도 겸손하게 아 죄송합니다. I'm sorry. But this is what the Bible really what God is giving me in the Bible to teach. And 그들의 그 풍량 통해서 그들이 진정히 이 예수님 나라 위에서 섬기는 자가 됐는지 그, 시, 그 시험 통해서 봤습니다. 예수님은 우리가 우리가 공부하기 위해서 우리가 한다는 그 얘기로서 우리를 어, 구분을, 우리를 평, 어, 어, 평가를 하지 않습니다. Jesus does not gauge us by what we have studied for, but who we really are. And that is why, for many of us, it may seem like God has blocked your work, He has blocked your finances, He has stopped your route. But the reason why Jesus does that is that through this storm, he tests whose path and whose plan we are really following. 이 풍량 통해서 우리가 하나님의 계획을 진정히 따르는지 시험하고 있습니다. God needs to rock our path to see if our path is his or it's ours. 그래서 제자들한테 이, 이, 이물 위에 넣거든요. Why? Most of these disciples were what? Fishermen. And fishermen로서 이 바다를 제일 잘 알고 이 배를 잘 운영하잖아요. 근데 그들이 진정의 그의 실력과 그가 아는 것 모든 과정에서 주님만 바라볼 수 있도록 그 시험을 예수님께서 주셨습니다. Jesus knew that the fisher they were fishermen first in, in their minds. That that was their skill. No matter what the society told them, they knew and they prided themselves in being great fishermen. It didn't matter what the world said about them, they knew in their heart that this was their gifting. And so Jesus had to say, no, if you're following me, your skills, your know-how, your pride, your experience, your resume, it does not matter when you follow me. Because those things actually, if not in genuinely in my name, it will stop you from coming to me. 
그래서 예수님께서는 이 제자들의 삶, 실력 통해서도 그가 할 수가 없다 통해서도 그들에게 예수님에게 의존할 수 있도록 이 풍량을 보내셨습니다. I want to say something that I hope young workers really pray about. 이 젊은 세대를 제가 제일 많이 보면 그들의 제일 큰 스트레스는 결혼과 직장입니다. Can I get an amen? Amen. 그렇죠? 그렇죠? 근데 이 직장이라는 것은 제가 그래도 좀 I want to give you perspective. 제가 미국에서 와서 되게 어 I was surprised when I came from the States. 이, 하, 이 한국 사회는 이큰 기업에서 작은 일을 하는 것이 이 작은 기업에서 큰 일을 하는 것보다 훨씬 낫다를 생각하거든요. 근데 미국은 완전 반대예요. 큰 기업 가는 것보다 내가 작은 여기에서 뭐를 한다, 이미 있는 것을 한다. 라는 얘기를 더 중요시 여깁니다. 제가 무슨 말 하, 합니까? 이한 가지 더, 두 가지 더 중요한 그런 얘기보다도 Maybe the things that you're thinking Maybe the things that you think are the most important are not that important Maybe it's not everything And 우리 안에 있는 이, 이 어려운 제일 큰 이유는 하나님, 내가 이렇게 열심히 했는데 왜 이렇게 안 됩니까? 하나님 이름으로 열심히 했는데 왜 이렇게 안 됩니까? And we say to God, we have, we have studied so hard in your name. We have served so hard in your name. I've done everything I can to get to the place that you have called me to. But why am I not there? Why am I not there? And Jesus sends the storm to show us that that is not the thing. That he wants for us. And discipleship is following Jesus, not what we think is following Jesus. Can I get an amen? And he sends the storm sometimes to show us that what we think is following Jesus is not following Jesus. Can I get an amen? And I'm not saying it's a white and black thing that is so clear, but there, there are so many times. Jesus sends us a storm to take us off the track that we are on and to bring us straight to Him. But finally, in this first thing lesson that Jesus teaches us, to pass the storm, we need to truly call to Jesus. 이 시험을 지나기 위해서는 우리가 풍량 속에서 진정히 예수 그리스도를 찾고 구, 구해야 됩니다. He puts us sometimes and most of the time in an unconquerable storm that we cannot do by our own strength so that we can finally seek Him. Until we're finally able to say, there is no other way but to look to you. And until we're finally able to say and cry out, Jesus, I don't care how, but save me. I've given up trying, asking you to save me my way. Just save me from this storm. I've tried to oar. I tried to uh, bail the water. I tried to throw off the stuff off the boat. I did everything I can, but the more, 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 more I try to have control, the more, God, I am losing control. I am over wanting to do it my way. Jesus, I need you, and that's all I can say. And Jesus is waiting for that moment for us to finally say, okay, I let go. I let go of my way. Jesus, I just need you to save me. And 그런 상황에서, God gives you peace in the storm. When we let down our desires from our boats, And look to Christ. He will give us the freedom that comes with finally letting go. Finally letting go. So first we have learned 
that the storm is a test to see if we are following Jesus. But the second thing we see here is that the storm is a training ground for a disciple, right? 이 풍랑은 훈련장입니다, 우리에게, 이 우리 제자들에게. And that what Jesus wants is that he wants to not just rescue us from the storm, but to give us courage to face the storm. 하나님께서는 우리를 풍랑에서 구해 주실 뿐만 아니라 풍, 아, 풍랑을 직면할 담대함 또한 주고 싶어 하십니다. 아멘. If you think about life, right? 이 어린 아, 그 어린 애들한테 물어보거든요. 그들한테는 되게 삶이 행복하고 그럴 때가 많습니다. Right? But you ask as you get older, how do you does your life get happier or like what happens? What's maturity? And maturity is what? You gain the strength to overcome more things. You gain the maturity to be stronger despite more obstacles. That is growing up. That is growing up. And that is discipleship. That is sanctification. He is not, we can't just live in the bare minimum where Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible told me so. I've sinned, I need your forgiveness. Let's go back to sin. I've sinned, I need your forgiveness. I'll go back to sin. That's not a life of discipleship. 그거는 제자 if your life does not have progression, if you're not getting stronger through the test, but you're going back to ground zero, I have to go back to the heart of worship. I need a pure heart. If you're just going back and back and back, you are not growing as a disciple of Christ. 하나님께서는 이 성경을 보면 진짜 우리의 구하는 것만 아니라 우리에게 Maturity를 심어 주십니다. And one of the clearest examples of that is the bronze servant and the stick in Numbers 21, 8 and 9. 이 노뱀의 얘기 통해서 하나님의 마음을 알수 있습니다. Right? As you guys know in this story in the book of Numbers, so the so you remember we talked about about rest, about the uh, the Israelites trying to go into the promised land. They have no faith. So what do they have to do? They have to wander the wilderness for 40 years. And during this time. Uh, they finally, uh, a Canaanite king attacks them. They overcome them, and they're going on their trek. And they start, what do they do? They start grumbling and complaining and saying, God, I hate this food. This food is so bad. And they're complaining. Why did you do this to us? Why are we suffering like this? 근데 이게 좀 신기하거든요. 왜냐하면 이 Israelite 중에서, uh, they have victim mentality. 피해의식 통해서 자기들이 저질른 이 어려움을 하나님께 they're in the wilderness because they didn't have faith, but they're like, God, why are we still eating this food? And so finally, God says, enough is enough. So he sends an, a drove of snakes. A drove of snakes that start biting the Israelites. So they're poisoned. They're like, and they go from, oh, this food sucks to, God, save me, right? Save me, save me from death. And so, they go, to, they go to Moses, and they say, we need to be saved. And so Moses goes to God, and he says, 하나님, 한번더 봐주세요. 하나님의 사람들을 한번더 봐주세요. You know what God does? He does not just heal them. Instead, what does he do? He says to Moses, take a bronze servant on a stick, and put it outside. And anyone that, maybe they're crawling or walking or whatever, goes to look at that stick, that they may be healed. Why does he say this? You know, this is a sign though, and I don't think there's too much we could say about the secular world, but one of the principles in psychoanalysis is the way you conquer your fears is to voluntarily face it. One of the principles of psychoanalysis really is, like if you have a fear in your life, you have to with your own will, face it. And if you think about this principle of the snake on the staff, Jesus himself, right? Jesus himself says in John 3, 14, that he will be like the snake on the staff. And that through all the snakes, the snakes 
representing all the things in life that are killing us, destroying us, and in this case, the storm, that if you look to the serpent on the staff, you will be saved. And if we look to Jesus in the storm, we will be saved. Amen. That through every serpent, through every obstacle, through every aspect of the storm, if we stop looking at the problems in the storm, but if we look at Jesus who is standing saying, silence to that storm, he will continue to build this faith and this strength to overcome. Jesus gives us the storm to make us look to him. If the snakes in your life are just slithering through the grass, you think you're something. But if you're bit by the snakes, if you're going to die because of the snakes, and you know you need to be rescued, you look to Jesus. And that is why the way we continue to overcome the storms in our life is to look to Christ through each and every problem, each and every fear, each and every obstacle. We are called to look to Christ. Finally, let's look at what happens at the end of this passage. So Jesus rebuked the storm. The storm disappeared, right? But what happens at, right after that? What does it say after the storm is rebuked? Even after he said, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? It says, they were filled, filled, uh, filled with great fear and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind or seas obey him? And I think that fear could be exemplified as all, or it could also be exemplified again as an uncertainty or, of what has happened. But the crazy thing is, right after all of this, they were in all a fear of God. And that, that fear continue to be in their heart. 우리는 사람으로서 이 삶의 공포함 그리고 우리의 삶의 이 흔들림 이 평생 있을 겁니다. No matter what you do, you will have a restlessness and a fear of life. Because tomorrow we may say it is certain, but it is uncertain. And there are so many things in our path that we cannot see. And so we have to accept in our brokenness that fear is a natural reaction. But that when we, in the storm, we learn to not blame God, not ask God why he is testing us, but solely whenever Jesus gives us a storm, when we look to him, and we learn that spiritual discipline, he will give us peace because of the storm. Because the storm will always remind us of how important or how Jesus is the only one that could rescue us through. And so when we look to Jesus, two main things happen. When we look to Jesus, we stop looking at our fears but we find peace in who he is. 우리가 예수님을 바라볼 때는 우리의 두려, 두려움에서 멈춘 것이 아니라 우리가 평화를 찾습니다. And this is the testimony of my life. 내가 제가 목회자 되기 전에 제가 이 과정을 제일 크게 제가 이제 마음에 있는 것을 점령해야 됐거든요. 아, 제가 이 목회자 길 걸을 과정에서 the first thing I said is can you handle it? Can you handle the pressure of not only being a pastor, but being a pastor's son? Can you handle not only being a pastor's son, but now being a pastor? Can you handle it? And I had a lot of fear. Until the point, and this is something I've said from the beginning of our church till now, till I said, I have an audience of one. And you know what that means, audience of one? I'm not only trying to please Jesus, but whenever all this confusion happens, whenever all these trials happen, whenever all these good things happen, in my mind, I'm only looking to Jesus. 
And that is why I don't get too up or down when people say something to me. I don't get too up or down when Sunday service is a certain way, this or that. I don't get too up or down by the whatever about the church or whatever about my personal life. I am always in my heart and mind saying every single moment I must look to Christ. And that is why there's a lot of people that tell me, you know, you look uh, just, you know, just at ease. And that what that ease is, is it doesn't matter the result. And you know, many people say that, but I, I truly want to confess that no matter the size of this church, what we actually, what the people in the world think we do through the church, as long as I'm looking to Christ, as long as I'm being faithful, I will be at peace. Because God is good. And because I've learned to look to Jesus in the storm, I've learned to look at my calling and not my assignment. And this is what I tell young people all the time. Your calling is different than your assignment. The assignment, a lot of times, is the boat that you have. The calling is you in the boat. Your boat might be big, small, it doesn't matter. The purpose of your boat is to go with Christ across the sea. And when you look to Christ, he reminds you of your calling. And so even as a pastor, 제가 전에 말했거든요. 10년 동안 중등부 사역을 했다. And 그런 과정에서 많은 목회자들이 저한테 말했거든요. 어찌 중등부 사역을 그렇게 오래 하십니까? <laughs> you right? 그래야지 그래도 조금 그래도 you, you, you do something. And 그런 과정에서 저는 말했어요. 제가 진정히 제가 예수님 안에서 제가 어떻게 사역하는 것을 그것이 중요하지 어디서 사용하는 것은 하나도 중요하지 않다. 그래서 제가 한국까지 오고 사명으로 모르는 데도 가고 한께서 저한테 말해주면 제가 uh, radical obedience 할수 있거든요. Only because of that. I'm not saying I'm perfect or I'm not saying I'm good. I, I don't want to say any of that. All I'm saying is the mindset that I have in that when I look to Christ, I'm able to know my calling and not be sunken when my ship or my assignment is falling apart. Your assignment is important, but it's not the main thing. But the German people are like this. It's because of the job. 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 But it's not like that. Especially when we are in the 진정이 밝아질 때가 많지 않습니까? 왜냐하면 그, 그때 진정이 우리의 사명을 모든 것을 집중할 수 있으니 and, and the funniest thing I will say is the opposite When you look at criminals, right? When you look at these people that have committed great crimes The moment at their trial That they're determined guilty and they'll get the death penalty A lot of them, you look at their faces And it's one of peace because they finally let go of their crimes and accepted who they are. <laughs> and I, sound, I know that sounds like a tragedy, but it's the opposite for Christians. When you let go of your circumstance and you look at who you are and who Jesus created you to be, within that, you will find the ultimate peace. I want to end this sermon with this question. What does the storm say about you? 이 풍랑은 당신에 대해서 뭐, 뭐라고 말해 하고 있습니까? And I'm going to end with one verse. Mark 4:40. Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? Why are you still afraid? Have you still no faith? 어찌하여 이렇게 무서워하는가? 어찌 믿음이 없는가? 
Last week, I talked to a person in, in our church during meal time. And I remember, I looked at his face, and he, he seemed very happy. And I asked him, hey, so, like, what, did something change? And then he told me that he had to talk with his brother. That he was so stressed about everything he was doing, right? He was so stressed, and his brother's like, hey, you have no faith. And he's like, no, I have faith. And his brother's like, no, you don't have faith. If you have faith, you wouldn't be the stress. And he was like, you're right. <laughs> you're right. I just, it's not my situation. I don't have faith. And so he decided to have faith. And that's why when he came on Sunday, he had this brightness on his face. That is looking to Jesus on the storm. It doesn't start with you trying to jump overseas and trying to swim through the storm. It starts with us looking to Jesus and having faith in him. And as the parable that was right before this passage, that faith of the mustard seed, he will use to make the biggest tree of the land. Can I get an amen? So the application today is few things. During the renewal time, Ask first the question, what does the storm say about you? Second, why are you so afraid? And three, this is for a lot of young people. Do you know the difference between your calling and your assignment? And if I want to tell you what my calling is, my calling from the moment I was born to the moment I am now, it was always to protect the powerless and empower those with no power. If I look at every aspect of my ministry, my tint that God made me was to empower those who had nothing. Not that I had much power, but with whatever little I had, to pour that into those who had less than me. Maybe it looked like because I was a big boy when I was fifth grade, I was 180 pounds, right? 5'8 with the mustache at fifth grade. I was on the playground protecting little boys from these bullies. It was that. Or when I was in my 20s, it was doing junior high ministry because they had no teachers or pastors for 10 years. Or here at NSC, giving my life for the next generation. That is my calling. My assignment, fight the bullies, junior high pastor, NSC pastor. It's all, the, it's all different, but my calling is the same. And so maybe during this renewal time, let us reflect, for some of us, upon our calling and think if we have mistaken our assignment as who Jesus called us to be. Can we close our eyes? Hey, Father, I just thank you so much for this time. 주님, 우리에게 이 시간을 주셔서 감사합니다. 우리 너무 부족합니다. 이런 말씀을 드, 들으면서 제자들처럼 첫 어려운 상황에서 우리의 길과 우리의 배움을 까먹을 때가 많습니다. 그러나 우리가 까먹기 때문에 주님께서 우리에게 시험을 주시고 우리가 진정히 이것을 믿는다. 주님을 믿는다를 먼저 우리에게 시험을 주십니다. And because Lord we know we are so forgetful. You test us to make sure that the most important things are actually ours and the most important thing of all if we actually follow you. So Lord, if there's anything in this time that make us feel uncomfortable, whether it be something spoken about our vocation, about our relationships, about our ambition, about this or that, I pray that in this moment, we may not look to those things, we may not look to those snakes, we may not look to the storm, but we will look only at you, Jesus Christ. Renew our hearts through this reflection renew our minds and most importantly renew our life so we pray